eyes of my marriage. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. May your wife be a good wife. May your husband be a good husband. May he be a caring husband, a thoughtful husband. May your wife, what concerns you, may it concern your wife. Pray, pray, pray. You are praying about your future. Deal with it today. Change the story today. Clap your hand. Stamp your feet. Pray. A life skills service. It is a self improvement service. Did you know that life skills is one of the subjects that were being taught or are being taught in the JSS now SHS system? It is important to develop your life skills. And so this morning, I'm teaching the church. By extension, I'm teaching the world. Synchronize your life with Christ. Synchronize your life with Christ. Otherwise, on the day that you die, you will not be happy where you will find yourself. You will not be in heaven. Because when you had the opportunity, you did not synchronize your life with Christ. And this morning, I want to give you 18 meanings of the word synchronize. Number one, to synchronize means to be in sync. Number two, it means to be in tune. From today, tune your life to be in line with Christ. Number three, to be in agreement. Number four, to be at par. Number five, to be in alignment. Number six, to match. Number seven, to be like. Number eight, to model yourself after. God wants us to model ourselves after Christ. 
Number nine, to be pari pasu with. Number ten, to be on the same wavelength. Number eleven, to flow with God. Number twelve, to be on the same or similar tangent. Number thirteen, to reset yourself. Today, somebody under the sound of my voice is about to reset themselves. Number 14, to be in line. Number 15, to be the image of. God wants us to continue to be the image of Christ. Number 16, to have the same mind. God wants us to have the same mind as Jesus Christ. Number 17, to be as passionate as Christ. Number 18, the final one for today, to measure up with Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From today, synchronize your life with Christ. Let your life be in line with Christ. Let it be in a similar tangent with Christ. Can I get six individuals to come? And join me. Six one, two, three. I want them from other places. Come. One, two, three. Four. Five. One more. Six. Leticia. Now arrange yourselves in line facing this way. And then the two of you come back a bit. Social distance. Thank you. Clap for them. They have done a good job. What I'm teaching you about today, I, I want you to go with, with a picture in your mind. When I say synchronize your life with Christ, I'm talking about your whole life. I'm talking about all of us. And I'm teaching the church and the world that God wants us to put our lives in line with Christ. So I want you to imagine that I am Jesus Christ. And you are one of these fine gentlemen and lady in this line. Are you following my teaching? And I'm telling you that God wants you and I to be in line with him. Every department of our lives must be in synchrony with Christ. Some of us, we allow certain parts of our life to be in synchrony with Christ. But we refuse to allow other parts of our lives to be in synchrony with Christ. That is not good enough. You will not qualify to be in heaven. You will not qualify to be in the presence of God. God wants us to synchronize our lives. Bring your life in tune. Bring it in line. Bring it in tangent. Some of these people may decide for themselves that as for me, I don't want my life to be in synchrony with Christ. There are many people out there that are there ahead somebody on the TV or the radio or Facebook saying that, as for me, I'll never go to church again. Such a person has decided I will not place my life in synchrony with Christ. That brother who has decided that he will not synchronize his life with Christ. It may be because of his sexual life. So when it comes to his sexual life, he is unable to commit totally to God. It may be in the area of his drinking habits, his womanizing, but whatever you are doing, I came to 
challenge you today. I came to encourage somebody today. Synchronize your life with God. Synchronize your life with Jesus Christ. Otherwise, one day, you'll be found in tears. You miss a good place to clap your hands. Stay in the line. Remain in the flow. And this is God's desire for us. That we will remain. We will remain. We will stay. We will allow ourselves to remain in line. Others don't want to be in line. When you are in line, you are not in line with Reverend Stephen. You are not in line because of Lady Reverend or death. You are not in line because of your branch pastor. You are in line because you understand that without being in synchrony with Christ, you don't qualify to be in heaven. And so whatever you do in secret, it is only in secret when it comes to human beings. But my omnipresent God, he sees everywhere you are. He sees whatever you are doing. Even if your husband is not there, you are doing it. Even if your wife is not there, you are doing it. I told you today is a life skill service. You must learn how to develop your life skills. And one of the things that the church stands for. Every Sunday we come to church. Every Tuesday we come to church. The word of God puts us back in line. The word of God God positions us. Make sure that we are standing where we ought to stand in Christ. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. But I came to tell the world. Synchronize your life with Christ. Synchronize your life with Christ. Enough of the people pleasing. You didn't hear that one. Mm. Many people do things just to please. Other, do other other people. People. Many people. people do they come to church not because they are determined to synchronize their lives. But they come to church because bishop or reverend will ask that, where are you? Let me tell you, the highest level of synchronization of your life with Christ it's when even Bishop has traveled and you still come to church. Oh, you, you didn't like that one. You, you didn't like that one because it's the truth. Preach. I don't go to church because of my pastor. My pastor is the secondary reason for me going to church. The prime reason for me going to church is to hear the word of God so that my life will be put in synchrony with Christ. But those of us, when we hear, oh, Bishop has traveled. Oh, Lady Reverend is not there. Oh, they have traveled. That day is off. You are, you are a baby Christian. I'm talking to the church today. You are passionate when it comes to Chelsea football. Oh, yeah. You are, you are passionate. Some of you, if you are invited to a party, you are among the first two people to arrive at the party. Even when your husband is not ready, you are ready. And it is the only time you are ready before your husband. Tell your neighbor, synchronize your life with Christ. Synchronize your life with Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap for these fine people. Let them take their seats.
Somebody say, wow. Wow. Synchronize your life with Christ, not your girlfriend. Synchronize your life with Christ, not your boyfriend. You are a wife, you are a husband, you must know God for yourself. Don't depend on your husband or your wife for God. Follow Jesus Christ. Be obedient to his word. The ultimate purpose of the church is to assist in the whole synchronization process. And so every time we come into the presence of God, we believe God to hear a word that will put our house in order. God is a God of order. Every time we come to church, we have the opportunity to redesign our lives to make a personal choice. Today, may our lives be synchronized with Christ. Amen. I said, today, may our lives be synchronized with Christ. Amen. In Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm. When, when you hear that reverend has traveled, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Trembling. When you hear that reverend has gone to Kumasi, work out your own salvation, not only in my presence, but also when I've traveled. And me better to so for pending to come be around. Walk as I and turn safety and member and son. I was what I you. Verse 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. It is not Reverend Stephen. And that's all for Stephen. It is not me. And then me. It is God and then me. who worketh it. Oh, no, just it is God who does it. And, then me, and, just and so from today, determine yeah, kind of to synchronize so yourself. Synchronize yourself. Synchronize your life. Your finances. Your marriage. Your education. Your health. Bring it in synchrony. Bring it in line with Jesus Christ. I said with Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen in the house of God? That must be your mission in life. Genesis 1 26. Go there. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Loved ones, we are God's image. You are God's image. We are God's likeness. When God looks in the mirror, he sees us. And when we look in the mirror, we must see God. Look into your life. Look into the mirror of your life. Do you see God in you? Oh man, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. It's okay to cut a cake. It's okay to do praise and worship. And by the way, I believe that this praise and worship team is Ghana's number one worship team. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I won't be surprised. One of these days, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir will invite you to come to New York. Amen. Hey. Hey. Synchronize your life. Lillian, it's not difficult. It is just a conviction. You must allow yourself to be convicted. The God we are serving is a God of order. He does not like this order. And so if you want to get close to 
God and allow God to have influence in your life. One of the things you must expect to begin to happen in your life is orderliness. Tell your neighbor, orderliness. That is the nature of God. He frowns on this order. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you today is a life service. So let me practicalize God's orderliness in your life. Sit down, Lillian. When you woke up this morning, if we are to go to your bedroom now, is your bed laid? Hey! Hey! I'll say it again. If I am to visit your home, your bedroom right now, if I am to put a CCTV camera in your bedroom, what is the state of your toilet right now? Where is your toothbrush right now? Have you put it neatly in a cup, in a container? I don't know who I came to preach to today. But I came to tell somebody under the sound of my voice. You are in a time of your life where you must synchronize your life and make your life in order. Somebody shout and say order. Shout and say order. That is the nature of God. Where is your laundry? Mm. I mm. said, where is your laundry? Oh, some people in this area have become uncomfortable. Shout and say, be loose. Be loose. The towel that you bath with today. Mm. I can tell you it's lying on your bed right now. And I want to say, it's lying on the floor of your room right now. Preach! Preach! Ah, so I will walk. M -m many of you. It's on the bed. Hear me. See me. God is a God of etiquette. Now, you cannot go far in life if you have not developed etiquette in your life. Let me tell you, when you sit in an aeroplane, they serve you with your lunch or your dinner, de depending on the time of your flight. And when they bring you your food, they brought it neatly on a tray. What I have realized about people with no etiquette is by the time they finish eating, the whole place is haphazard. But I have watched people who have etiquette. And when they finish eating, you will not even notice that the food, actually, there's an empty bowl in front of them. Do you know there are people who eat in their bedroom and when they finish eating, they leave the bowl there for two days, three days, four days. Hey, 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 Oh, 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 am I spoiling the church? Am I spoiling the service? Tell your neighbor, today is today. Oh, somebody has sent a picture of your bedroom to pastor. Hey! Let me tell you, some of us, if you compare the way we have dressed in church, can I preach? Oh, the, the hey. people here are not encouraging me. <laughs> let, 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 let me preach here. When we compare the way you have dressed in the church. If we were to do a collage on your Facebook page and we put a picture of you right now here and your bedroom here nobody will believe in this world that that's where you live. Oh, 
somebody in the house. In my home, I will be fear. By 8:30 a.m., my home is ready to host 1,000 people. I don't care the number of people that can come. I'm ready. I say some of you, the men. Oh, the oh. men. You only iron when you are coming to wear something. I'm talking about you synchronizing your life, putting your life in order, living a life with etiquette. It's part of Christianity. When I saw the pastor doing the recap, I was more than disgusted. Mm. I said to myself, ah, this, the last time a recap was done was seven days ago. As for me, I'm not like you people. Who. I believe in saying it as it is. And, and the truth is one of the most difficult positions to take in life. But the truth will always set you free. There was a young man who married in the church. And before he married, I asked him to write a letter. I told him, tell me why I should allow you to marry this young in the church. He is the first person that God told me, let him write a letter to you. And so I gave him one week. He wrote the letter and brought it to me. The letter is in my office right now. I have refused to come and read it to you. But if you say I will bring it and come and read it to you, but I don't want to. And when I read, sometimes I sit in my chair when I'm free, and I take that letter and I read what he said marriage is about, what he said he believes marriage stands for. And I compare it to how he was carrying himself in his marriage. You see, many of you, before you marry, you are synchronized, but I don't know, for some reason, when you marry, the synchrony, you move out of line, you move out of position, you move out of shape, you just shift. And, and majority of you who shift are the ones who end up saying that I, I was forced to marry. Oh, oh, pastor is the one who uh, who forces somebody to, to do something. Now, what I your wife, was I there? What kind of childishness is this? Mm. When you were sending your wife all those WhatsApp messages and love messages and pictures, was I part of the, the, the three-way call? Let me tell you, tell your neighbor, every marriage has problems. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, even bishops have problems in their marriages. Even as one that's why Jesus didn't marry. He knew that this thing, if I get involved with it, I'll face problem. You see, there are certain things, if you don't want to face problem, don't enter it. But marriage is something as you are entering, you are entering a problem. The lady reverend told me, I'm managing you. I said, please manage me. Manage me. Because I'm a working problem. I'm a headache. Hey! Hey! hey. Yesterday,
Friday afternoon. Mommy said she's resting for two hours. Nobody should disturb her. After one hour, 20 minutes, I went to lie by her like this. Then I shook her one. I shook her two. Then she said, why? I said, it's time to wake up. She said, why? I said, if you don't wake up, how will we sleep again in the night? <laughs> I'm a problem. May I how? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then later on, after she woke up, after two, I said, my, my head is paining me. I said, oh, why is your head paining me? And she said, you are asking me why my head is <laughs> Am I not a walking problem? You are also a walking problem. Also, yeah, how? I'm not alone. You are also a walking problem. <laughs> don't, don't let, let their makeup deceive you. <laughs> oh, I, I should rewind it. <laughs> their makeup deceive you. For you to think that you are the only problem. Me, I'm, 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 I'm a problem, but you too. You too. You too. You too. You too. So, we are two problems that have come together. Am I preaching to anybody in the house of God? Are you developing a life skill? Yes. <laughs> Many people want me to read it. It's so in interesting. The, the mindset with which you enter the relationship. The names and titles and nicknames you give to each other. That one, too, I chose it for you. You, you call him K, he too, he calls you P. K, copy and, 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 and what? <laughs> copy and paste. <laughs> Don't bring yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us learn how to do everything with etiquette. Have you realized that when you are talking to a pastor, it's different from when you are talking to somebody else in the church? When you are talking to pastor, always it is with some decorum, some respect, some honor. But if there is anybody in the church, especially if there is a hierarchy, anyone below you in the hierarchy, when, they are, when you are coming to speak, they know that nothing good can come out of your mouth. Listen to how Lady Reverend and I speak to people and speak to them in a similar way. You don't speak to people with honor and respect. But you want people to respect you. The Bible says a man who is friendly must show himself friendly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody in the house? Yes. Am I helping somebody? Yes. Or you are still thinking about the state of your room? When I wake up in the morning, sorry, I'm not okay. I lay the bed or mommy lays the bed. Sometimes when we are all in a good mood, both of us will lay the bed. We don't allow anybody to lay our bed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We tidy up our room. Not because somebody is watching us or somebody is coming to visit us. Because that is how we are. We respect ourselves first. And so when I go to my room, my room is not tidy because Pastor Solo will come and visit me. My room is tidy because that's how I want to see my room when I get home. Some of you, when a visitor comes and they have to use your toilet, you have to tell them, give me one minute. Eh? You have to go and look in, clean for about eight minutes before the visitor. What is that? What is the meaning of that? Am I, look, let me tell you. Develop life skills in life. Christianity, this is what makes Christianity whole. The people who live with you, you, you make them so hungry. When they hear your voice, their heart jumps with fear. 
Apart from you and your wife and your child, you are not interested in anyone else. I'm preaching on. You are preaching good. Become more than just you and your wife and your one child. Think about others too. Always you are buying soya milk for your child. Biscuit for your child. Chocolate for your child. Chocolate But what about the other children in around your child? Don't you know that when they curse and not wish your child well, it shall not be well with your child? Yeah. Anne. Pastor, go to my office. You see a bag of toppings. Bring it quickly. When the children are looking for reverend, 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 it's not because of anything. No. As a pastor, God gave me a revelation. Have a bag of toppings in your office. office. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Abigail, are you are you learning something? Abigail, who's Abigail? Baby? Huh? No, no. Please pay attention and learn. Develop your life skill. It's enough. Give me the one that is open. You see, God is a God of sharing. He's a God of sharing. Always sharing. That's the nature of God. Always sharing. Now you are hoping that you 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 get. <laughs> Do you see how you are wishing that the thing to come to you? Imagine that it was a child that I gave one to. And there were two or three other children there who didn't get this. How would they feel? If you were grown up, this is how you are feeling. Then imagine how a child will feel. Mm. Wow. Wow. That is why you must pray, pray that you will never have a stepmother in your life. Oh, yeah. Amen. You should pray that prayer that, Father, let my, my husband, my, my father manage my mother the way she is. Whenever I'm at home and my sons enter my room and they see me gently, they, I pray that they are learning a lesson that in spite of anything and everything, I'm still here. Wow. I'm still here. Because of you to marry and continue in spite of anything. Am I preaching to men in the house? Yes. I don't want to call three or four women here and tell me that show me their difference. In spite of everything. I said in spite of everything. Stay in the thing. I said stay in the thing. I said stay in the thing. I was in court to do something at the registry a few days ago. And Will you marry? Yes, Bishop. Uh -huh. Then you are synchronizing yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when I got there, the, the workers had been come, so I sat in the office. And one of the ladies who knows me very well in the court, she's called Becky, she came by and sat by me. She said, oh, where is your wife today? I said, oh, she's sitting in the car. Then I told her that I didn't marry that. The person I'm marrying should come and suffer. I married so that the person I'm marry will be comfortable in life around me. And then she said, Ah, lawyer Ajiman. And you Hey. Do you know the hey. meaning of that? For our world viewers, 
Un, un chimpna means, so are you trying to tell me that you don't have a girlfriend anywhere? A no side, side chick. chick. No, no side chick. Hmm. How many men have side chick? Raise your hand. Rant out of the door, side chick. May the Holy Ghost arrest you. <laughs> Amen. May you speak the truth. And I said, what? And I said, hey, Side chick. And Pina. Do you know what I told her? Is the side chick coming to give me something more than two breasts? No, this is how my mind works too. And that's how your mind should work. Sa are you following my teaching? You see, if you are a side chick and you are coming, then you should come with something more than what I already have. Now, but if you are not. coming with what I already hey. have, what am I asking you for yours for? Mm. It's a mindset. Mm. You can shake, you can wiggle. It's one buttocks, one vagina, two breasts. <laughs> the value is the same. As a matter of fact, I'm preaching a good message. You are preaching good. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I use this principle to keep myself in check. It doesn't mean I don't have any feelings. If you don't have feelings, you are not a man. Mm. Men are hunters. Mm. Are you a hunter? <laughs> <laughs> Am I teaching anybody life skills? Yes. I pray for you today. Yes, Lord. From right now. Yes, Lord. May you become an upgrade of yourself. Amen. You didn't hear what I told you. Mm. Change the way you talk. Change the way you behave. Upgrade yourself. The I way you, you walk must change. I hear you. Some of you, if we go to your room, what you wore last week is still lying in the room. Mm. You haven't washed it. You don't like washing. Mm. One day I entered somebody's room. I looked under the bed. A bow was an mess. Stand to your feet. Let's bring today's service to a close. So we did not ask them for an awesome barrier. Are you going to upgrade yourself? Yes, Papa. Anyone under the sound of my voice? You are decided today that you want to surrender your life to Jesus. Today you want to sing your life with Christ. Lift up your right hand. I'll pray with you right now. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. God bless you. As you have chosen God today, may he also choose you today. Amen. If your hand is lifted up, I want you to say this prayer with me and I want you to mean it from your heart. And I invite the whole church to join in. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. From right now. From right now. I accept you. I accept you. Into my heart. Into my heart. And into my life. And into my life. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. From right now. From right now. Come and influence my life. Come and influence my life. Come and change me. Come and change me. I want to be in line with Jesus Christ. I want to be in line with Jesus Christ. From today. From today. Give my life a testimony. Give my life a testimony. Because I walk with you because i work with you in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus amen amen wow you missed a wow. good place to clap your hands to the glory of god praise the lord hallelujah if you said this prayer with me 
I can give you the assurance you are now a born again Christian. Look for a Bible believing church like Love Worship Christian Center. There are several hundreds of thousands of churches. Look for a Bible believing one. One that will teach you etiquette. And worship there and develop there in Jesus name clap your hands and take your seats make sure you wait for a piece of the birthday cake from Jam Bake Station in Tema praise the Lord hallelujah if you joined us on Facebook live my name is Reverend Stephen Ajiman it's always a high honor and a great humbling pleasure to host you at Love Worship Christian Center. Continue to connect with us. Continue to receive the purity of God's word from us. And I tell you, your life can never remain the same again. God bless you. Still wear your face mask and stay safe. Get your uh, COVID injection when the opportunity comes. Don't believe the few odd cases. Just flow and be happy. God bless you. Stay safe. See you on Tuesday at 7 p.m. sharp. Church, let's clap our hands. Oh, let's clap our hands.